pray that it gets preached. Yes, yes, yes. I would sing you a nice little song, but instead, uh, that's why I preach. If you have your Bibles tonight, I invite you to the book of John, John chapter 20, John chapter 20. I'm quite sure a few weeks ago, if you were uh, visiting with uh, or worshiping on Resurrection Sunday, you probably heard a passage out of out of this chapter. But I want to take you to a place that you might have missed. I want to show you something from God's word tonight that should apply to everyone in this house tonight and beyond. As a matter of fact, when I'm done, you should say to yourself that you are going to come out from behind that door. You see, last week, many of you probably witnessed what was happening in Boston. And on Friday, you might have witnessed the fact that their scare was such an imminent scare that they locked down Boston. They put everybody behind doors. When Jesus went to the grave, the disciples, <laughs> they went behind closed doors. I wonder tonight if there's anybody that's here that has been behind closed doors. Maybe, I don't know about you, but maybe some of us are in hiding as Christians. Woo. You haven't found yourself yet? We're about to go there. (laughs) John chapter 20. Follow along with me as I read aloud the text. Verse 19. The Bible says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you. As my father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto him to them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. I see a door right there. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. (laughs) We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Hmm, I see another door. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither in thy thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, be not faithless, be not faithless faithless, but believing. Hmm. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet have believed. We are blessed because we have not seen and we believe. (laughs) I don't know if you really understand the significance of what's happening here. Here are the disciples that walked with Jesus that are behind closed doors. They saw the miracles performed. They saw the crucifixion. 
They saw the burial, and now they're witnessing the resurrection, and they're behind closed doors. Where are you at? Where are you at in your own life? I just wonder what doors you're hiding behind these days. Come on. As God continues to show himself right now, where are you hiding at, Christians? Oh, you, you're, you're not hiding? I haven't heard from you. I haven't heard anybody going to the cause for Christ in this way anymore. As a matter of fact, I'd venture to say you've been on lockdown. You've been on, Christians ought not be on lockdown ever. I always know a good church because they say at the end, the doors of the church are open. Whoa, we don't lock people out. We don't lock them out. I think the song says, bring them in. Bring them in. Oh, I, I'm going to preach instead of saying, I'm going to preach this. I want you to watch what happens with these disciples, and I want you to begin to put it into your spirit that God wants you to come out from behind those doors. You need to start to get it within yourself that you may have doors that are shut and you are not presenting what God has given you. You might not be the one presenting the gospel message the way he wants to. You may actually be held back because you allow those doors because you stand in fear of what man can do. I'm going to tell you that you ought to come out from behind those doors. And you ought to begin to know that where you are, there am I also. That's a promise. And you can, you can stand on the promises of God. If you can't stand on the promises of God, you've got nothing. There is no firmer foundation than standing on the word and the promises of God. That's why you ought not be behind those closed doors. First of all, let me, let me tell you. What, what happened? The Bible says, in the beginning of our text, it says, huh, in verse number 20, it says, and when he had said, had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. You ought to come from behind those doors because he's going to show you the truth. You see, he showed them his hands. And then he showed them his side. They didn't just identify him because they saw him. You see, some still think that seeing is believing. But I'm telling you, unless you see it with your heart, you don't have to worry about believing. I'm telling you that when the word of God is proclaimed that you ought to stand on the promises because someone saw all of these. They saw it. And because they saw it, that's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. The truth in the word of God shows me that they saw it. There were witnesses. Therefore, I can be a witness. He showed them. He showed them their hands. Many people blame Thomas because they say he was a doubting Thomas. They catch on to that story real quick. But I tell you that the disciples didn't believe. He had to show them. They didn't have the confidence. You don't have to worry about Thomas. You know why Thomas said, I don't believe unless I stick my own fingers in there and my own hand in there. You know why he said it? Because they were behind locked doors. They were locked up, scared of the Jews. They were in hiding. Huh. They were in, watch this now, witness protection. The witnesses were in protection. Thomas came and, uh, listen, if Thomas wasn't there, I got to tell you, he's the only one wasn't scared out of the bunch. Because everybody else was hiding from the Jews. Thomas came and Thomas said, huh, y'all playing trick on me. April Fool's. Still April. But Thomas wasn't no fool. He said, if you saw him, bring Jesus to me. I ought to see him too. I want to see what you saw. 
I want to experience what you experience. Thomas wasn't doubting. Thomas wanted a little bit of love from Jesus Christ. He said, bring him. Bring him in. If y'all saw him and you were locked up, I'm a free man. And I want to see him too. Mm. Jesus showed them. And therefore, they could come from behind those closed and locked doors. You see, Jesus had to convince them also. He had to convince them that he was who he said he was. So Jesus, when he came, he greeted them. How did he get in? How did he get in? How did Jesus get in behind the locked door if they were hiding? Whoa! I'm telling you that Jesus can walk in. He can be where you are. He can be where you've been. He can be where you're going. I'm telling you that he doesn't need an admission. Whoa, no, 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 no. What key does he need except a man say, come, I'll receive you. Come unto me. You know what? I think that he could kick down the doors of your life and just be dancing a little bit in your life until you start feeling him, until you have courage, until you feel that he has given you everything to go out and be a free witness. No more locked doors. No more locked doors. But I tell you that Jesus greeted them on three occasions. In verse 19, in verse 21, and in verse 26, he greeted them and he said, Peace be unto you. If I'm locked in, hiding and scared from the Jews, and somebody comes in without having a key, without knocking, without having me open the door, they better say peace be unto me too, or I'm going to say peace to you. Watch out. Watch out. Woo! You don't have to tell me about being scared. Okay, how big a boy you are. It's time to go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Somebody is on the other side of this locked door. But Jesus said, peace be unto you. He had to rest assure them. He had to tell them everything's going to be okay. It's me. Because they knew how they greeted one another. I felt at home today because when I walked through those doors, hey, brother, glad to have you, brother. You greeted me in love. And therefore, I belong. And Jesus wanted them to know the same. Now, this is where it gets a little bit uh, difficult because you may have seen so much for so long. I'm going to show you something hopefully you've never seen before. I know you read your Bible. I know that you've been in church. I know you grew up in it. I know you've done all these things. Look at verse number 22. The Bible said, uh, and when he had said this, he said, peace be unto you. And when he had said this, guess what he did? He breathed on him. He breathed on him. Listen, he, he breathed on him. He didn't have to lay his hands. He didn't have to throw nothing. I'm telling you that mimic is the best form of flattery. You know why? Because his father did it. Turn turn to Genesis chapter. Turn to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. We're gonna. We're gonna. Boy, I tell you what, I hope, my, I hope my son loves what I do. Anything that I do, if I catch him doing it, boy, I, I might just smile real big. <laughs> Genesis 1, and verse number 26. Since everybody's got the handy-dandy Bible with them, let's read that aloud. Genesis 1, 26. Ready? Read. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let us make man in our own image. Us. 
make man in our own image. All right. So now we got it. God created the heavens and the earth. He created every living thing, right? Now he says, let us make man in our own image. Mm -mm, That ain't enough. Go over to chapter number two. Turn to chapter two. Genesis chapter number two. Mm. Y'all about to catch this now. We got our handy Bibles, right? Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. Ready? Read. Oh! 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 (laughs) Woo! Just like my father did. Just like my father did. He made us special. God never breathed into any other thing but us. And so his son says, I want to breathe on you because that's going to give you more confidence to come out from behind those locked doors. He, oh, Oh, the spirit, you ought to be excited, happy, and glad. You ought to be shouting his praise that Jesus wants to breathe the Holy Spirit on you. There is life in the breath of God. Man was created, but... He didn't come alive until God breathed into a, to his nostrils, breath of life. I tell you that the disciples were hiding behind closed doors and therefore dead until Jesus <sighs> breathed the Holy Spirit on them. When you find that you're behind locked and closed doors, I will guarantee you this, you might not be breathing anymore. You might be holding your breath in fear. You might be holding your breath because behind one of your doors, it might be loss of job. So I'm hiding. I ain't going to work. I hear they might be cutting. They might be laying off. I'm telling you, Christians, come out from behind those locked doors and just let Jesus... (sighs) Woo! You can go to work tomorrow... Breathing a sigh of relief. Woo! You can breathe. The Holy Spirit is on you. You've got all that you need. You ought to be. Go on walking in there free. No more locked doors because you've got God. You've got Jesus. You've got the winning ways, the winning team. You've got the magic formula, and you don't have to be behind locked doors no more. Stand on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Woo. How about this? We realize that he, uh, he greeted them. We realize that uh, he also breathed on them. He showed them. He breathed on them. You know what else he did? Look down at verse number 26. Verse number 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. John chapter 20, verse number 26. Verse 26. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, and after eight days, again, where was his disciples? Oh, Oh, eight days later. Disciples were within. Uh Uh-oh. And Thomas with them. And then what happened? Then came Jesus. What what happened? Well, okay, Jesus came. What? The doors being shut. They were locked up hiding again. Didn't he just... Then he just breathed on them. And they're hiding again. 
This time Thomas is with him. The Bible says the door is being shut. What did Jesus do? Stood in the midst. That's my point. You can come out from behind closed and locked doors because Jesus stands in the midst. In the midst. He's not a far off. He's right here. When your doors begin to close, when things begin to get shut off, when your life stands in turmoil and you can't seem to get things going, I want to tell you that there is Jesus in the midst. He's in the midst. He's never left you. He's never forgotten you. There is no reason to blame him for anything because When he breathed the Holy Spirit on you, I'm telling you, you can walk with a little bit more confidence. I'm telling you that you don't have to worry about hiding behind doors. You can open and shut. Open and shut. You can slam doors behind you because Big Daddy, God is in there. He stands in the midst. He is not hiding. I shall not be moved. I'm anchored. I'm anchored in Jehovah. I got to tell you that uh, no matter where you go, God stands in the midst. They were hiding out and the doors were locked, but Jesus invited himself in to the private party. As a matter of fact, Matthew 18, 20 says, for where two, watch this now, or three, or 150 are gathered. Where is he? Oh, y'all don't believe that. He's locked out. He's locked out. We locked Jesus out. Just closed the doors and I locked him out. You don't have to worry about him no more. Put a lock on him. He don't have to come in here. He's not going to. You believe the spirit's in here. You believe you can catch something in. You, do, you, do you believe that he can breathe something on you? There's no way. He can't come where you're at. He's not going to be in the midst. But maybe you are the doubting Thomas. Maybe it's you that's locked behind the doors. Maybe it's your life that won't stand for him. Maybe it's you that's standing in the way of the gospel message being presented. Maybe he didn't need it to be shouted from the rooftop. Maybe he didn't need it to necessarily be shouted out in stadiums. Maybe he needed it in your job, your house, your grocery store, your car. <laughs> watch, watch this, young people, in your iPod. <laughs> Woo! On your Facebook, on your Twitter, <laughs> on your Instagram. I wonder if you're hiding behind huh, closed and locked doors. Where are you? Where does your life stand? Where do you stand for him? Do you stand in the midst for him? Or do you stand behind closed and locked doors? Where's your life at? Maybe you, uh, you're one of those seeing is believing people. Hey, I've never believed because huh, I never saw. I know they keep talking about this nail thing. I know that they keep uh, trying to get that message out. Listen, the nail is significant. But you know what we often miss? When they pierced him in his side, it wasn't this side. He told them, he told Thomas, stick your hand in there. Stick your hand in there. They got him. But thank God, they didn't keep him. He came from, by, he rolled back the stone. The, the, the door to his grave was rolled back. Oh, 
Oh, man. You wonder why he walked in and stood in the midst? Because he could roll back a stone. He could definitely step behind the door. You don't believe it? Oh, I, tell you, I tell you what. Now, if you think uh, you can escape God's commission on your life, you just keep running. You just keep hiding and see if he doesn't uh, shake up your world. See if uh, you don't find yourself like Jonah. I don't want to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to run like Forrest. <laughs> yeah. Woo, come here, Jonah. <laughs> what you talking about, Jesus? He'll come and get you. He'll come behind your door. He'll come and find you where you've tried to lock him out. You would better believe he'll come and get you. He came and got Peter on the road. Just when he thought, I'm afraid of nothing. Why persecutest thou me? It's hard to kick against the prince. When God wants you, he'll come and get you. Key or no key? Open or no open? I'm telling you that he can get in the midst when he wants to. I'm telling you that he'll chase you. And if he loves you, he'll also chasten you. He will come and discipline you. He will deal with you. He will bless you. He will come outside and show you everything that you need to know and believe. But you know what? I'm going to tell you this. And I'm going to wrap this thing up. If you believe that this is not a word for you, stay where you're at. If you have never believed before, stay where you're at. If your life is perfect, stay where you're at. Rebellion starts with the refusal to go. The commission is to go. I wonder how many times he's spoken directly to many of you and you just didn't go. And that rebellion is your door. That refusal to move forward. That refusal to say what he asked you to say. He asked you to open your mouth and he would start to speak. You have confidence because he's in the midst. And I just wonder, why haven't you moved? Why are you hiding behind doors? You've heard the word of God. I have one question for you. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? All heads are bowed and eyes are closed. In the seriousness of this, seriousness of this moment, in the seriousness of this moment, has the Lord spoken directly to your heart? Has he opened up the doors of your heart? He wants in. He simply wants in to your life. He wants a change. He wants a confidence and a courage to come out of you, a boldness for him. With every head bowed and eyes closed, I'll ask you this. I don't know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I've run from him all my life, but I'm here right now, and he's working in my heart. He's working in my life. I want to come from behind this door of sin and I want my life forever changed. Come now. Come now. I want change. I want to live differently. I want Jesus to stand in the midst of my life for me. Don't deny him today. Don't worry about tomorrow. This is your moment. This is where your life changes and takes a different path.
one of righteousness. That's me. I'm a sinner. To break every day, break every day, break every day. To break every day, break every day. Sorry, I have to sing this part one more time because this excites me. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every day, break every day. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord.
There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 